I'm Eric Hanischek. I'm an economist who researches education policy at Stanford University. And I've been spending a lot of time recently on what leads to better development of countries. In particular, as we look around the world, we see some countries grow much more rapidly than others. And economists have been trying to figure out why, why that is. Why do some countries tend to get rapid growth and others tend to fall behind? In some work that I've been doing, uh, largely in conjunction with Ludger Wustman at the uh, University of Munich, I have been focusing on human capital and in particular the quality of skills and knowledge that people have as a driving force for economic development. As we move from agrarian economies, which emphasize the quality of land, to industrial economies that emphasize the quality of management and uh, firm uh, development, and move into knowledge economies, we find it's the quality of the human capital, the people, that drives everything. And this, in fact, explains almost all of the growth that we have across uh, countries of the world. If we look at countries that know more, they grow faster, or have at least over the last half century. And if that continues into the future, we'll see that the countries that are ahead 50 and 80 and 100 years from now are the ones that have the stronger human capital. Now this completely explains why some areas of the world like Latin America and Sub-Saharan Africa have had such poor growth records. These countries have actually started and have lots of school attainment. People go to school a lot. It's just that they don't learn anything when they're going to school. The fact that they aren't learning much has a complete dampening effect on growth rates around uh, the world. And to me, development policy is how do you improve the human capital of countries. Secondly, it's a largely a measure, it's largely important how you measure human capital and skills of the population. Just counting the amount of time people spend in a seat doesn't do very well because some people go to school a lot and don't learn much. That's the experience we have in South, uh, South Asia. It's the experience we have in Latin America. Now, if you actually want to improve things, uh, we also have learned that it's not just putting more money into the schools. We have lots of evidence from within countries, from across countries, from developing countries, and from developed countries to suggest that simply putting more resources into schools without changing anything else doesn't uh, systematically lead to better performance. What the research that I have done and others have done suggests to me is that the one thing that's important is teacher quality. And uh, that's what we should be aiming at. Now, teacher quality is itself a, an elusive concept because it doesn't match up with the things that we usually use as measures of teacher quality. The most effective teachers are not the ones with the most education or the ones with more experience or the ones that are certified according to uh, the standard governmental rules on who should be certified to teach and who shouldn't. It turns out some people are better at it than others and they're unrelated to those factors. For that, we have to develop better institutions, institutions that provide incentives for schools and systems to hire better teachers and to keep better teachers. The ones that seem to work uh, as we look around the world um, are that we uh, have more choice for schools uh, by parents, so the parents can enter into whether their school is doing a good job or not. Where, whether we have centralized exams that measure how well schools are doing and we have an accountability system that matches that. Um, it also pays in, in developed countries, but not so much in developing countries, to have more local decision making. 
The problem with local decision making is that schools may work to improve student achievement, but they may work for their own purposes, uh, things that make themselves better off. Um, and so if there is going to be local decision making, it has to go along with having an examination system that tells you whether schools are in fact doing what you want them to do. And then finally, uh, in the list of general institutions, would be that there are direct performance incentives for schools and teachers that do well. We reward those that do particularly well, and we don't reward, in fact, we remove people that are doing an extraordinarily bad job. Those are lessons that we get from research. These lessons have been made possible by more and better data recently, and the final story is that improving our schools depends in large part on being able to measure what's going on and to see whether our ideas of what's going to improve schools actually work out when we put them in the classroom.